In this video, we're going to be talking about the Dentex sea bass love child of the tropics, the green jobfish. Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Daniel Mann. In this episode of Fish in Focus, we are talking all about the green jobfish, otherwise known as the uku in Hawaii or the carcup in South Africa. The scientific name is Aprion varicens, and they are actually in the Lugenidae family. This includes other tropical snappers like Mangrove Jack, Kubera Snapper, Red Snapper, Mutton Snapper, Golden Snapper, Moses Purge, but they are quite distinct in the way that they look. They don't really look like any other fish in the ocean. They are a long, round, muscular fish, and if I was to describe it to someone in the Mediterranean, imagine a sea bass and a dentex have a love child, that would be a green jobfish. They are beautifully flanked with a green olive color, and under their chin is often very iridescent, especially when you've just caught them. The tops of the fins can sometimes be this vibrant blue color as well. They're actually a very stunning fish when they're freshly caught. Green jobfish reside in tropical to subtropical waters. Starting in Eastern Africa, you get them from Durban in South Africa, all the way up to the Red Sea, into the Indo-Pacific region, out to Hawaii, and in the north, you get them in Southern Japan, and of course, all the way down into Australia. On the west coast of Australia, you start getting them north of Shark Bay, all the way up through Exmouth and into the Northern Territory. On the east coast of Australia, they have been known to be seen in Sydney, but more commonly, you're going to see them from about Coffs Harbour North into Queensland, the Southern Barrier Reef, all the way up the Barrier Reef to the tip of Queensland. There is no evidence to suggest that green jobfish change sex once they get older, and they actually grow a little bit faster than most tropical snappers. The world record for this species is an enormous 17 kilograms shot by Aaron Puckeridge at a place called Elizabeth Reef. This was actually in New South Wales in Australia, but it's a very remote place. Imagine Port Macquarie on the east coast of Australia, 400 kilometers east towards New Zealand is Lord Howe Island. And then you go another 180 kilometers north, that's Elizabeth Reef. It is extremely remote and not many people have speared there before. You're most likely to see green jobfish in the two to five kilogram size range and anything over 10 kilograms is an exceptional fish. They're classed as a demersal species, but they behave much more like a pelagic fish. I have never seen them inside a cave or deep in structure before. You are much more likely to find them on the edge of a reef, a drop off or broken rubble type bottom. You don't have to dive particularly deep for green jobfish if you hunt at the start of the day or the end of the day. They are diurnal feeders, which means they hunt during the day looking for cephalopods, squid, octopus, crustaceans, and other fish. You can see here my mate Bryson Sheehy in the Coral Sea shooting a nine kilo jobfish in very shallow water. Oh man, it's a water, this place fucking rules! It is not so common to see a lone jobfish. Usually you'll find them in a shoal. Smaller fish tend to be much easier to spear than the larger models. Irrespective of size, jobfish will show up, sometimes in innumerable numbers. Jobfish as far as the eye can see, and that's 25 meters visibility. Before we move on, I just wanted to make a quick mention that I have some Dive Everywhere shirts on my website. They have the halibut scene from Norway on the back of them. 
They are at diveeverywhere.co and throughout this video, I have hidden some hefty discount codes, possibly looking like this. They're throughout the video. You find them, you use them first. They're one time only. So keep your eye out for those if you wanna check them out. Diveeverywhere.co, back to the jobfish. As I alluded to earlier, larger green jobfish are much more difficult to spear. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Most of the time you're going to find exceptions are on very remote areas that don't get dived much at all. Once you actually do put a shot in one of these things, they fight very dirty and head straight for the bottom. Here you can see the classic jobfish roll. They often roll upside down and power up the reef that way, particularly if it's a poor shot. My shot was quite good on this fish of around 10 kilograms, but my spear went all the way through and the fish was on the shooting line. This makes it difficult to put any pressure on the fish as the line can get cut on the bones and tear the flesh. The jobfish races up current with the spear trailing along the bottom and unfortunately the spear got snagged on the bottom and sadly the fish got eaten by a shark. Jobfish are not one of those exclusive clicky type of fish. They don't mind hanging around with other species on the reef. You will often find them with other desirable fish such as mangrove jack, long nose, buffalo, yellow lip and spangled emperors as well. When I have dived very flat, boring type bottom that doesn't get dived much at all or has never been dived before, I've often seen jobfish shoaling a fair bit off the bottom, sometimes even mid-water. It's not ideal to dive directly on a jobfish, it's much easier to get right to the bottom and try and lure them in that way, but if they haven't seen many divers before, you can actually glide silently towards them and get a shot in. Here I was heading for the bottom and a shoal of fish caught my attention. All big green jobfish. This next clip is my personal best green job fish of 11.4 kilograms, shot in a similar way. One thing that can make jobfish much easier to spear is the use of chum or burley. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially putting some sort of bait or fish. Generally, I'll cut up fish frames and drop that in the water. That tends to attract pelagic fish and other things off the bottom. Jobfish are gluttons for this sort of thing. Sometimes, however, they will not touch burley. For instance, where I'm from in Brisbane, big green jobfish will not eat the burley. I have never seen it happen. You have to shoot those things the old fashioned way. Getting to the bottom, scratching, attracting them in. 
This next clip is from Tonga and Tim and I had a burly trail set specifically for dogtooth tuna, but loads of green jobfish were coming in and stealing the burly, so I got distracted by those. Once a few of them had been shot by the divers around us, the bigger ones stayed closer to the bottom, so therefore I had to use the glide to the bottom method silently and I managed to put a nice shot into this fish. The most challenging way to shoot a jobfish is to get to the bottom a speto style and wait. You can watch nearly any of Ryan Meyer's videos from Hawaii about the intricacies of attracting a jobfish in, but the fundamentals are the same. Get to the bottom, get some cover, make a little bit of noise or throw some sand up, try and get them closer to you and put a good shot in. This clip here is from my mate Bryson Sheehy. He's one of the best divers I know and he has shot a lot of plus 10 kilogram green jobfish. One of the reasons he is so successful is because he is incredibly relaxed underwater. When he raises his gun from the bottom, it's very smooth and non-threatening for the jobfish. That is, until the jobfish gets too close. Contrary to that beautiful dive by Bryson just then, here's a terrible dive from me. I'm looking around erratically, I'm waving my gun around Wingardium Leviosa style. The jobfish do not react well to this at all and I'm back to the surface, sun's jobfish. This is also quite a sloppy dive from me. I was on the way to the bottom and I heard the boat noise over the top from the boaty driving around like a maniac, so I thought that would have scared all the fish away. I didn't really commit to getting to the bottom properly. I saw a job fish and then I thought, oh, there'll be nothing around. I turned around and this nine kilogram job fish was just a little bit too curious. There's that quintessential jobfish turn and burn. The best shot for a green jobfish in my opinion is behind the head and out the cheek on the opposite side at somewhat of an angle. These things can bend your spear. They will do it if they're big around 10 kilograms and you shoot them poorly. The other reason you want to shoot them in the head is so you can control them off the bottom and give them a bit of stick getting back to the surface. Otherwise they will bury you in the bottom and you're not going to have a good time as you've seen when I got my fish eaten by a bull shark. The other great reason for shooting them in the head is not ruining any of the flesh. They have a really nice white meat on them. I don't think they're quite as good to eat as something like a red emperor or a golden snapper, but they are still a very good fish to eat. They tend to be a little bit stronger than other milder reef fish in my opinion. That's all I got for you on this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of it or you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. If you want to check out the t-shirts, diveeverywhere.co. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Who am I kidding? 24mm lens, it's never gonna work. We're just gonna go hard and cut.